hate this job. I don't want to come to my work. I don't like going to work. I wish I, I had a different job. And all of a sudden, they get packaged or laid off or whatever, and they go devastated. But that's, that's by force now at that point. Mm -hmm. They don't have a choice to say, oh, I'm, I'm not ready for this packaging right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you have said it, if you have said it, better be ready to receive it. Sometimes it's really pushed on you because you have said it. And there are times that you actually can say no and it will go back, it will go turn, take its turns and come back again. And if you're ready, but it will take some time. Right? So, believing, faith and allowing, faith and believing go, go together, allow things to happen, be fluid, allow things to happen. When you see a step to take, take the step. But don't push your will to get where you want to go because it will not pay. It will not get anywhere by physical will. But you will get there by, by what you're asking and allowing to happen for you. Allow it to happen. You said be clear. We have this in two actually things. Be exact, firm, and clear. That is true. Exactly know what you want and stick to it. They'll come to you. Stick to it. Now. Be open to receive, we talked about. Uh, no, you have it. Oh, the no, you have it was part of this faith that I was looking for. No, you have it, right? <laughs> and affirmations. What do affirmations do for you when you're manifesting? It helps to raise your vibration. Yes, it will help to raise your vibration and sometimes even probably rebuild uh, or get rid of some core beliefs that you might have, right? But in order for you to get rid of those core beliefs, affirmations alone won't help. You're going to have to dig them out and destroy them first and then reaffirm. You have to understand, you have to make your affirmations according to what your core beliefs are so that they can work actually against each other. If you're just saying something without uh, a belief, internal belief, it will take a long time before the affirmation kicks in. Can you do like a, a little example of that? Yeah. For example, if somebody is saying, I am beautiful, and internally they don't believe it, okay, it will, eventually they will start believing it. But it will take much longer time than if they actually sat down and started seeing themselves through the eyes of source, practiced this a bit, and understood that there is no imperfection in anyone, and, and, and they can be loved no matter how they are, what they look like. Okay, and and the, uh, exter you know, the external physical looks of everybody is a different thing. You don't have to conform to anything. Once they understand that in their core, when they do the affirmation, it sinks in much quicker. For me, because I've had quite a few, I, I do three different affirmations, <laughs> but it's an NLP that I do, a neuro-linguistic programming, so that I can change my current situation to a place where I can manifest the affirmation better. So I do affirmations plus my NLPs. That's good, because and NLP will dig out all the core beliefs that you have, mm -hmm. and in that you will resolve them, so that whatever affirmation you give it actually now has a better solid ground. Rem remember that just, just doing an affirmation just like that, yeah. just like you have a building, an old building on a, on a site, yeah. and you want to build a new building over it. Right. Can and I'm clearing the foundation first. Right. You but can you have that an NLP and the affirmation that you'd like to manifest happening at the same time? I don't get that. Like my NLP, one of my NLPs is about forgiveness over guilt and hurt feelings. Okay. Right? And then once I get over that, it's about self-forgiveness and guilt over the people in my life who have passed away, who I have felt guilty for their passing. Anyhow, because that's related to certain things I wasn't able to do, I'm doing an affirmation that says I have already achieved this. But it's directly related to the NLP that I'm still working on. That's and fine, though, because you're doing them both at the same time. Yeah, yeah that's you can fine. Do okay. That's fine. So the next one is commanded. James said commanded. When you commanded James, you already have known all of this. That's when you see your li life through the eyes of source. So you command it, you have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> meditation, meditation or visualization and things like that come in handy 
if you have wavering faith. Right? If you have wavering faith and you can't hold yourself to, to hold your own focus on whatever it is that you want, or you don't have enough faith in the thing that you want, then meditations will keep you there at least. You know, it gives you the ground to, to be there. And the more you do it, the more used to it you get, and easier it becomes. Yes? I have a question about meditation. Um, my mother used to give me a lot of grief because I stopped going to temple many years ago. And part of our service is meditation. But the thing is, the way we do it, and the way, I mean, the way I've learned it since I was a kid, is very different because I, I've asked my parents this. I go, how many of you get to the state of nothingness? And my dad's like, it's hard to get to that state. And so I stopped going, and my mom told me something, which I'm thinking I'm now understanding, and I want to bring it up. When you meditate by yourself, versus when you're sitting in a room full of people, like here, and if we were to meditate, is the benefits of group meditation Absolutely. more beneficial than just one person Absolutely. meditating on their own? Absolutely. Powerful. There's no doubt in that. And that's why I started, just, I started to go. Absolutely. There's no doubt in that. The okay. energy of the meditation that comes from a group is much, much that's higher true. frequency than one person sitting there meditating. Absolutely. So yeah, she's got a point there. But she if the meditation or whatever it is that you're, you're doing does not match, that's a different story. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> everybody's going you, with you your own. You want to get together with somebody whose meditation matches yours, yours. Yeah. so that the frequency is the same, so the care and the uh, energy that you're sending out is going to be more effective. Okay. I'm I agree. I find that uh, the level of uh, energy and group meditation is, is quite powerful, but I've also noticed it in nature, the trees. Mm -hmm. It's the same. Like and if I'm in nature. And I meditate. I feel the same. Well, it's actually even bigger, but I feel that uh, when I first start, I'm, I, it feels like I'm with people, but I'm not. I'm with trees, but but you know, same um, kind of energy yeah, when I start. The natural state of nature: birds, bees, mm -hmm. butterflies, trees, all of them. The natural state of them is meditative. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Because they're always 